Welcome back to Nicolens' Comic Corner Classics as Non Classic. This is episode number 634 and double show number 538. All right, got two DC trades for you. First up, and these are trades I own. Next episode is two more Larry books. This one is first one is All Star Western Volume One: Lords of War and Owls. Collecting issues seven to twelve of All Star Western Volume Three. Now the writers of these issues are Dustin Gray and Tony Palmiani. Yeah, they're the writers of these issues. With Moret as the uh, artist, but there's also artwork by Patrick Sarsberg, Jose Luis, uh, Luis Garcia Lopez, Scott no and Scott Knowles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is yeah, and the Julian Hex issues. Yeah, they bring back Talia Black. Yeah, and they even show it twi a couple times in here where she and Julian Hex have sex. Yeah, and it's even showing off all her scars. Yeah, apparently Jonah Hex is basically in love with her, so, yeah. So they can't pretty much his history with her canon, which is interesting. And they also have a run with a Talon. Yep, a Talon. Because they have an issue in here that's a tie-in to Night of Owls. My personal guess is the reason why Alistair Western had a tie-in to it was because it was set in Gotham, though it was 19th century. You got praise the stories. Heck, there's even uh, there's even one point in that storyline that he teams up with Nighthawk and Sentinel, which I thought was really cool. But uh, they're not the only one. Western here is probably helping. You also, have Batlash makes his first post Flash appearance. Yeah, that was cool to see him. Yeah, apparently uh, there was this woman who that they forced into a shotgun wedding. Yeah, they they thought he was the father because of how much of a, of a ladies man he is. Turns out, nope, he was not the father. It was somebody else. And then we have. Uh, Doctor Thirteen. Yep, that's what I've been thinking. Okay, Doctor Thirteen isn't he the, the the guy who's DC's biggest skeptic and in the in the post flash continuity an old friend of Phantom Strangers? Well, he's from the 19th century and he's a Paris uh Paris psychologist and he investigates supernatural and he's got a handlebar mustache. Let me show you what the guy looks like. He looks like uh, where is he in here? This is Doctor Thirteen. Yeah, he kind of looks like Doctor Thirteen from Present Day if he was steampunk. Yeah, that's him. That's Doctor Terrence Thirteen. Yeah, uh, from what I figured out about this guy, he's actually the ancestor of the Present Day Doctor Thirteen, which is interesting. Great stuff. I'm gonna give this a ten out of ten. This is really good. Really underrated the series. It's too bad the series got canned after 34 issues. My personal guess is why DC ended it: low sales. Mm -hmm. Alright, next up is Green Arrow Volume 3 Emerald, Out Emerald Outlaw Collecting issues 12 to 13 of Green Arrow Volume I think this is Volume 6 Yeah, 6 w right, writ right, writ Written by Benjamin Percy and artwork by Otto Skimat Yeah, and this storyline we re see that apparently Green Arrow is being framed for a series of murders yeah, I I remember when the storyline was promoted when it when it, before it came out, which got praised it for DC for doing that. Though for some reason, a DC has apparently stopped doing whole promoting upcoming storylines. I think they're doing it for occasionally some Batman stuff now, but as for storylines under books like this book and the Green Lantern stuff, yeah, apparently they're getting barely promotions anymore. I don't know why. Maybe DC changed the marketing strategy for this one. I don't know. And the person tried to kill, who's actually framing Green Arrow for the series of murders, is, is believe it or not, Maka Merlin, the Dark Archer. Yeah, he's the one who's framing for these murders, and so he actually is framed for, at one point he's framed for the murder of a, of a, of a quarterback, and also he's also framed for the murder of the chief of police. Yeah, and... He's, he's later actually a, a cleared of all the murder charges because they were able to figure out that, yeah, uh, because uh, there was a couple players who actually saw 
uh, Malcolm Rowland killed another, another guy. They actually saw him do it. So yeah, these guys are the ones who kind of clear green arrow of his of of being a murderer. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and the cops in here are apparently written to be very trick or happy. It's like, oh, we have a guy with a bow and arrow. Apparently, they they, they think this is the guy who killed him. This by the fact they have no evidence to the contrary. They have no. Oh yeah, there's a green. There's an arrow lying on the ground. Could you at least examine it? I mean, can you at least let them look at the damn thing instead of basically pulling out your guns? Seriously? What is your problem? I don't know what these cops' problems were, How? why they're so trigger-happy. Yeah, I have no idea why in the world the man personally wrote the Seattle PD to be so trigger-happy with the exception chief of police. Heck, there's even a, a group of crooked cops called the Vice Squad who just go around and basically kill a bunch of people for no reason. Just because they're just because they're criminals, so let's have a massacre in a nightclub. Yeah, and these even so these guys try to massacre a group of prisoners. Yeah, there's no wonder why these guys got killed by the actual chief, the actual police, after this guy had all had already been charged with. Get this, he had pulled a guy over for yeah. Later, apparently, he's suspected of being a drug runner. Yeah, and then instead of like properly talking to him or at least arresting him he just basically beats the living crap out of him and greeno has to stop him for doing it and the guy is later chastised for him later cleared of all charges eventually he's uh suspended from the police force for doing it oh yeah and apparently this wasn't his only time doing this so yeah interesting stuff uh i like the fact they actually got rid of a lot of the corruption in the cf police department here which is nice I think Van Person must have taken that idea of crooked cops for CLPD. My personal guess is he probably got that from the Arrow TV show. And John Diggle takes away Malcolm Malone because apparently he owes him one for some reason. It's revealed in a later storyline. Uh, the storyline here is good. I'm going to get this roughly a 9.5 out of 10. It's really good. All right, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for the next episode, which will be episode number uh, 635 and double shot number uh, 530, I believe it's 39. Yeah, 39. Okay, but to see you in that next episode. Bye. I guess I can do one more.